Once you have your bonus sewing machine threaded, and you can see how to do that in other videos on this channel, retract the needle all the way and insert your material into the cup feed. You put the fur sides facing each other and you place the material as high as possible within the gears. If your fur is not behaving, you can spray it with a little bit of water. Once you're ready, you can start the machine sewing using the foot pedal. Sew one stitch past the end of where you want to stop, retract the needle all the way, and open the cup feed. Then give it a pull, really sharp. This will lock the stitch. If you want, you can reverse the direction of the material and re-sew the seam. That'll make it pretty much impossible for the seam to ever be undone. Here's a shot of the machine running in slow motion. Whip stitch fur sewing machines don't use a bobbin, but rather create a chain stitch from a single piece of thread. The resulting stitch is stretchy, extremely strong, and leaves an almost invisible seam line, especially if you got long pile shag. You also get a do-over with a whip stitch. If you make a mistake, just don't lock the seam, and it'll unravel all the way. If for some reason you want your work to be really permanent, you can re-sew in the opposite direction, lock everything together. Once a stitch is locked, it is pretty impossible it's going to break in such a way that it will unravel. However, in a high reliability application, it's okay to double stitch everything. As the fur is fed through the machine, you only want to support the material on the left side. Pulling on the material from the feed side will cause the seam to twist in an unsightly manner. You may pull slightly on the right side of the material as it exits the machine. This will improve stitch consistency. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.